ジャンプとリアルが融合する。この世界で戦え。Jump Force. Welcome back to Retro Rebound. In today's video, oh, you got the rapid scissors out now because you're making me do it. You're making me go back to Jump Force. This game came out in 2019, and when it was announced, it felt like a can't miss anime fighter. Sure, Bandai has a million and one 3D anime fighting games, there's no doubt about that. But this one was pulling from 15 different manga. So you were gonna get JoJo characters, Dragon Ball characters, One Piece characters, Yu Gi Oh characters, Naruto characters, Hunter x Hunter characters, and the list goes on. To have all of them in one place was truly exciting, and this could have been the definitive manga fighting game, if you will. There was so much riding on this game, and I'll always remember seeing that first ever announcement trailer, and I went, yo, that is Goku in New York City. That's my home. I need this game right now. So, I decided to fire it up in 2023. Why is that? Well, Bandai dropped support of this game pretty quick in the scheme of things. It was pretty obvious given the platform that this game was with all the manga it took from that continuous DLC character support was something Bandai should do. And certainly they did. For two seasons, they continued to pour characters into Jump Force and make even some more obscure picks or fan favorites like Miriam from Hunter x Hunter, which was a really nice one to see. However, support quickly shut down. No longer can you play ranked matches online. You can't do clan battles. You can't get into lobbies. You can't track the news in this game because there is none. The online store has been shut down. But perhaps most interesting of all is that Jump Force is a game that you can't buy physically anymore in stores. Bandai announced that they are delisting it from digital storefronts and physical copies aren't being printed anymore. So, weirdly enough, Jump Force is going to be a rare game in the years to come. Does that mean you have to go rush out and get it? No, but if you're going to, a buyer's tip is that if you want the, I'll put this in quotes, definitive edition in the terms of content, not necessarily the quality of the game running, you probably want to go over to the Switch. The Switch actually has the first season of characters built into the cartridge. The base game on PlayStation 4, you do not have that. So, just keep that in mind if you are in the market for a copy of Jump Force. But with that, I wanted to fire it up this year because I thought it'd be fun to go back into the story, see how the fighting feels, see how that roster feels. And of course, since 2019, I've watched a lot of anime, read a lot of manga. Some characters are in this game, and I thought, well, I have a different level of appreciation now that I'm more familiar with some of the source material, if you will. So, What do I think of Jump Force in 2023? We're going to get into that in today's video. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you are into nostalgic and retrospective content, consider subscribing. Let's begin with the complete box experience and see just what Jump Force has to offer us. So, we have the PS4 copy here, as you've already seen. And on the back of the box, it says, Unite to Fight. There might be a little bit of Napoleon Bonaparte energy here, if, if that's a quote that they're trying to lean into a little bit.、Uh, but I'm,、uh, you know, they say, what is it? Separate to live, unite to fight. I think that is the quote there. And I know that's not the full quote here, but I couldn't help but think of it. And if Bandai was trying to give a little tip of the cap to history,、uh, kudos to them. But let's continue on. The back of the box also says 40 playable characters from 15 mangas. Fight online and offline to save the universe from destruction and create your avatar by mixing elements from different mangas. All right. So let's get ready to pop this one open. Get ready for the manual. Psych. Yep, it's empty. So I don't think this is one of those D listed games that's going to go for a lot of money, but I definitely could see people starting to work their way up to $60 over time. We'll see. I got this for $20. Bucks. My friend got it for $7 bucks a handful of months ago. So it's only going to continue to climb, I think, slowly over the years, but we'll see. So why do I think Jump Force is so fascinating to study? Let's start off with the character creator. If there's one thing I do like about this game, it's that it really puts its shoulder into the idea of hey, you can pull elements from all these different characters in this game. So you can have Sasuke's hair, Karapika's suit, and change the color of it and make your own anime character that looks as wacky as all of these. And I love that. I love going into the character creator and giving my character these gruesome looking eyes, crazy anime hair. And eventually, by the end of my playthrough, I had a nice green suit on with no shoes. I just liked how rebellious I looked. And this game, again, just lets you really be that crazy anime character. So I like that. Then the story and the fighting begins, and it starts to get a bit rocky from there. So the story itself is kind of crazy. What's pretty much happening here is the real worlds are colliding with Shonen Jump universes. So that's why you're seeing 
New York City, Paris, and so on and so forth, because these worlds are colliding, and I think that fits the theme of the game. The box does say, unite to fight, so even the real world is uniting to fight. And I think it does give some cool stage diversity. While some have called it bland, I like the idea of fighting in Times Square a little bit more than I like fighting again on Planet Namek, personally. I know that might be a hot take for some. And especially because they're using Unreal Engine 4 and they're leaning more into the realism factor, I like how the stages look, but it makes the characters have this uncanny valley look. When you look at, say, Frieza's teeth, which I know the teeth in this game have already been talked about a lot, but it was immediately something that the conversation around the, the Jump Force teeth returned to me. Some of these characters with their teeth look freaky. It is a really weird looking game at times, but then other times it looks right. Like when I look at Deku, I go, who hurt you? But then I, I look at a character like Sasuke and think, okay, he looks nice. And then he opens his mouth and I see his teeth and go, ah, okay. It's such an inconsistent visual experience. And that's why I kind of dig it. I kind of dig how weird the game looks. It's very strange where, would I say, oh, I like it, $60 on launch day type like? Well, I tried it at that price and didn't like it, but now at this low price, I kind of like its weird quirks. But then you start leaning into the story more. So what's happening are these things called Venoms are invading these different universes, and they're an army of mind-controlled villains that are led by these two other new characters that are going to be in Jump Force. So now what happens is to fight back against the Venoms, you have to create the Jump Force which I think is an interesting idea, like the Shonen Jump Force, right? And so what happens is your opening missions are going to be finding all of these characters, like Vegeta, who has a cube go up the wrong area, it looks like, in one of the cutscenes, and suddenly he's a mind-controlled evil villain, and he becomes a Venom. You have to fight him to knock him into his senses, and then he joins the Jump Force. What is kind of the calling card of this game is the, the crossover interactions. Unfortunately, very little of it's voiced. And so for me personally, I thought, oh, it's really cool seeing all these characters interact, but having it not be voiced hurts a lot. And it stinks because the voice acting in battles is pretty good. It's that high octane anime screaming that you've become accustomed to. Like when I hear Yugi summoning dark magician girl, he's like, Ooh, like I just love the bassiness of it. It's very intense, very uppity. I'm a big fan of it. I just wish more of that energy was in the storytelling here. Perhaps what wounded me deeply, I just watched Death Note, okay, for the first time this year. And it is my favorite anime ever, no doubt about it. I would argue it's my favorite television show ever. I adore Death Note. I didn't get very far in Jump Force, so imagine me sitting there with my feet up. I'm just cooling it, playing Jump Force, and then my boy Light Yagami pulls up and I'm like, oh my god, no, no way this guy is in this game. And it was a hell yeah, no way, but also a hell no, no way. Like It was such a conflicting experience. You had to be a fly on the wall to see my reaction because I couldn't believe he was here. And you see Ryuk in the background. And even though I haven't touched the Death Note, I can see Ryuk and, and Ryuk says that to Light and Light just walks away. It's one of the most awkward opening cutscenes. I was like, no, I just, that's when I wanted to drop it because I went, no. No, I cannot think negatively of Death Note in, in any way, shape, or form. So the story is equal parts ridiculous, cool, and honestly undercooked. It could have been so much more. It didn't have to be compelling, thought-provoking. It just had to be cool. And I think it even failed the cool factor, unfortunately. And so that was a real heartbreaker. So we get into the fighting, right? That's what you're really here for. Most people don't care about the story, even though I do. They, they want to play as these cool anime characters. And do they feel different from one to the other? It's kind of topsy-turvy here. Does it feel good? Not really. It's, it's cumbersome would be the best word to describe it. It's a very clunky fighting system. I remember actually testing this game out at E3 2018 at one of Bandai's booths and... I remember thinking there, I love the roster, but one thing I can't stand in my anime fighting games, really any fighting game I should say, is when you're playing as this super powerful character and when you get hit with a knockback attack and your character falls down, they lay on their back and you just see them breathing for three seconds and your enemy runs up to you and just waits for you and the fight just stops. 
and then you pick yourself up and you get back into the fight. I can't stand that stuff and Jump Force has it and it bugs me to no end. And so that was one of those red flags in the early days. But when I really got my hands on it, for me, what I really struggled with is how sluggish the fighting feels. So when you're chaining together some attacks and you're calling in a tag partner and then you're doing a super, there wasn't a flow between combos and super attacks that felt good. It almost felt like I was cheesing the game unintentionally. Like one of my favorite combos was with Karapika where I would use this binding chain and you had to catch the enemy at the perfect time in the combo, which some would argue is tech, but the place I stopped the combo was mid kick. It just felt so awkward and unintentional. And that kind of just added to the overall clunky nature. You'll have this heavy attack that you can hold to break the block of an enemy. Otherwise you can spam, spam, spam. And we'll talk about that in a moment with online play, but it's really about the tag attacks, the super attacks, the ultimate attacks and the flashiness of it all. But when you put it say side by side, with the Ultimate Ninja Storm games, which had a fluidity to them. Yes, they were very much one button combat systems like Jump Force is, don't make any mistake about it. But at least I would say that Ultimate Ninja Storm had a fluidity and because of substitute jutsus and whatnot, there was a technique there, even if it was to some minimal, it's still existent where I feel like with Jump Force, it really isn't. Why do I say that? Well, I took my talents or lack thereof to online play because I remember when Jump Force first came out, most of my time was spent online. And when I look at the hierarchy of my friend group, I would say I'm in the middle in the terms of the fighting game strength ladder, right? I have a couple of friends who just naturally are gifted in fighting games. And so the launch week is usually pretty agonizing for me until I get my feet truly wet. And then I start to clean shop for a while. But with Jump Force, it was a day one Maddie Slaughterhouse type of game. Like I was just beating everybody, no problem in my group. So I was feeling confident going online, but you know, this game's you know about four years old. So yeah, it's not gonna go too hot for your boy. I got destroyed online pretty quickly. And eventually I had to get into my spam bag because I tried to fight with honor online. I learned this during my days with Injustice 1. I've talked about it a lot with projectile spamming. That was the day I decided to grace the fighting community with pure honor and respect. I am not gonna play your projectile spamming game. But with Jump Force, as I got deeper into my experience, I thought, let's see what happens if I just really play nasty. I just play dirty, spam, 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 constantly cheesing my tag attacks, staying from a distance, spamming projectiles. Suddenly the game is a lot more manageable. So. I don't think the fighting system encourages technique, it encourages cheese, and that becomes problematic to the game's balancing because certain characters are better for that than others. I just feel like with Jump Force, the focus was, and I get why, on getting as many characters in as possible versus balancing the game, because I think if they balanced the game and then started to pile on the characters, clearly they had the, the plethora of options to pick from where they wouldn't have been short on options and had to spend much time figuring that out. It was just, I think, spend time on a tighter roster and really build something more fine-tuned. I'm not of the mindset, as I said in my Taiketsu video, that every game has to be this, you know, Evo-style fighter, but I think some technique in Jump Force could have gone a long way in keeping it alive for the fighting game community. You need a little something to bite on, and it's hard to walk that line of arcadey and technical. Like, I think something such as Smash Bros. Ultimate does. You can pick up Smash Bros. Ultimate and say, I love this roster. I love what Nintendo's done. I love these characters. I am going to buy and play this game just so I can enjoy these characters. And you can play it like a complete casual, but there is a highly technical side to that game that makes it fun and competitive for those who want to go up a level. And I'm getting a little tired of these fighting games saying you're either one or the other. You're either completely casual, one button fighting, beat em up style combat, or you are absolutely blessed by the evo gods and you have a million and one button prompt inputs but if you can master those you are technical among technical anyway i got a little ranty there so yeah the fighting i think is hit or miss is it flashy does it look good uh, yeah it looks decent right I'm, I'm not too dissatisfied with how some of the ultimates look but what i think is really the calling card here is that roster when i open up that roster and i look at all those characters by the way without dlc because i wasn't about this pin more money on this game i was really impressed again i thought this is such a special game roster you really have a little something 
for everybody. And you know, the DLC added in characters like Miriam, it added in My Hero characters, it added in more obscure ones, and you'll find those opponents online and you'll see that the edge goes towards the DLC characters as it seems to always to encourage people to say, hey, you wanna compete? Pick up this little guy here, you'll get a little edge online. Oh, and then put out the balance notes patch about a couple weeks later when sales start to tail off. I know how it goes. I've been around for a long enough time. When you're not online, you're gonna be offline running missions. This game has a weird Xenoverse-like structure. So in Xenoverse, you would go to like the capsule court machines and to the counters and you'd collect missions there. And the missions in Xenoverse were kind of cool because they would twist around the reality of the Dragon Ball universe that you already knew into something different. And that worked for a lot of Dragon Ball fans, as I've said here before, because we've had that same DBZ story for so long that flipping it on its head was actually really interesting because it was just the first time something was really different in a while. Jump Force kind of tries to follow that same structure of here's your mission desk, you can collect characters this way, you can do side stuff this way, you can earn money this way, and with that money you can spend it on new outfits and new jutsu. So you can go to a skill shop and you can buy skills for your character to level them up, you can buy all these different super attacks and level them up. When you're in that customization area is when I think Jump Force is at its best. It's this weird love child between Ultimate Ninja Storm, Shonen, and Xenoverse that just comes together and it's why I say it's not a great game, but it's a really interesting one to play. Like even when you get dropped into the lobby, you just run around and it's this interactive menu, if you will, that's very weird. Like for example, to find your missions, you'll go to one of three teams, team A, B, and C, each section dedicated to a different part of the, the shonen worlds, if you will. So you'll have the One Piece section, the Dragon Ball section, you'll have the Naruto section, and each of them have their own little assets in there that call back to the manga. And it's really cool, but it's also spread out and huge that navigating the menu, if you will, in quotes, can kind of be a pain. And there's this one central area where everything is, but it's lacking elegance. It's like I said, it's such a weird video game. But now support is gone. There's no more of those DLC characters. And it's such a shame because the DLC characters were great, but I get why they moved on from it. What I find really disappointing though, is that they delisted the game. You know, that's the crazy part. We've already talked about it, but this is not available on digital storefronts. If you already own the content, let's say you have it in your digital library. Yes, you're good. Like you can go ahead and download it right now if you wish. But if you don't have it, you gotta go pick up a physical copy. Now, I, I pick up physical copies for this channel. Naturally, I did have it on my account already, but I just find it so interesting that a game that's, in the scheme of things, so new is already delisted. And that's why this channel exists, among many other reasons, is the preservation of video games is so important. Like, I don't care that Jump Force was a mega flop to Bandai. The fact that it got delisted, I think, is a disgrace. A bigger disgrace than this game could ever be, because there are some cool ideas here, and I love how it puts its shoulder into customization. I love how it leans into all of the manga that's here. It's cool. That shouldn't just disappear because y'all didn't hit mega profit on it. It should exist. It should be remembered. So that's what we're doing here today. In 2023, Jump Force still is as unimpressive as ever, if you will, but there are cool elements that I wanted to highlight here. And my man, Light Yagami. Why? Why could I see Ryu? I just, don't get me started, man. All right, it's time for you to sound off. If you played Jump Force lately, I mean, some of you might be. I was not having an issue finding online matches at all. I was hopping into multiplayer matches very quickly. So if you're playing it, let me know what you think down below. If you're not, let me know what you're thinking. And with that, take excellent care of yourselves, and I will see you in the next Retro Rebound. Peace out.